welcome to our 10th anniversary of Antigua Forum. Today, we're with Conor Boyack, president and founder of Libertas Institute. Welcome, Conor. Thanks for having me. Okay. So, Conor, what about Libertas? What, what, why did you start with the Institute? What have you been doing? Tell us a little bit more about that. Libertas Institute is a think tank based in Utah, where I live, and primarily we work on state and local laws. Uh, but we've had a lot of success. We've been around about 10 years, and so we're starting to expand our work outside of Utah and help groups in other states pass the laws that we have gotten done and affect broader change, which is really exciting to not just be working in our backyard, but we can uh, work elsewhere as well. And, uh, and we do a number of educational initiatives as well because we believe that if we're going to affect change, we can't just change short-term policies. We have to have a broader social engagement and educational program for especially the rising generation um, to sustain the freedoms that we hold dear. And so probably one of our more famous ones is these uh, Tuttle Twins children's books that we do, uh, part of kind of our holistic effort to try and promote liberty both in the short term and also in the long term. What other public policy changes have you pushed for? I don't know if you could give us a, a slight example. About a year ago, we won the biggest victory award from State Policy Network for a data privacy law that we got passed. Uh, in, throughout America, uh, law enforcement, police, the government are able to access the contents of people's phones and computers, often without a warrant. Uh, there's kind of a, a loophole that exists, and so we closed that loophole in our state. It's called the third party doctrine. Uh, very significant, and now we have the country's strongest law when it comes to protecting our data privacy, which in our day and age is very important because all of our communication is basically digital. Mm -hmm. um, and so what our team does is we'll do the legal research, we'll meet with stakeholders, uh, who are impacted by this or who have a, a, a strong interest in the issue. And we'll formulate consensus around what the right policy should be. We'll go meet with elected officials and educate them about why it's so important to change that law. And then now uh, what's exciting for us is we're, we're exporting laws like that beyond our state. And so we're working with several uh, states to get a similar law passed as well. Our organization is actually very broad. A lot of think tanks focus on just a few issues and that's completely fine. Uh, we decided to take a different approach. Uh, we work on uh, many, many different issues. We work on property rights, on uh, civil liberties uh, and privacy. We work on government transparency, on economic liberty, parental rights, education, and much more. The Tuttle Twins books were kind of an accident, uh, born out of this organic experience I had in wanting to talk to my kids. Uh, as we sold the first book, uh, a lot of people bought it. Uh, we had a lot of attention, it was very unique. Uh, no one had really encountered something like this. And so to us, that was a market signal that we should do a second and then a third, people kept buying them. It wasn't until the third or fourth book that we started to develop this vision of what the Tuttle Twins could become, this, this grand project that uh, there was an opportunity here to serve you know, the world with these uh, ideas and fill this void, not just for uh, dozens or hundreds of families, but for millions. And, uh, and so we just started running a little faster in producing content. But I had this nagging thought that uh, as much as we might try and go sell these books directly to the families who are interested, these materials are even more so needed in the families that are not familiar with these ideas, specifically getting into the schools and having broader exposure. I didn't know how to do that. Um, I struggled with the idea. And so I came to Antigua Forum uh, three years ago with the goal of trying to figure out how to get into schools, how to create curriculum type content and uh, persuade teachers to present this material. And, uh, and it was an overwhelming experience. I mean, pages and pages of post-it notes everywhere and process and strategy. And it was very helpful. I feel like it, 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 the Antigua Forum experience accelerated me five years further down the path that I would have kept stumbling through on my own. Uh, but the benefit of having so many people tear down the idea and rebuild it and, and put me down further uh, down that path, give me ideas and introductions to people that can help me in that journey, uh, was immensely helpful. 
What was interesting for me is that the path that we followed coming out of Antigua Forum was one full of obstacles that we somewhat foresaw during the Antigua Forum experience, but that I couldn't really realize the magnitude of until I started down that path. So we spent about a year and a half going into schools, working with teachers, executing on our Antigua Forum plan um, until I realized that it was the wrong path to follow. And uh, frankly, I'm, uh, I see the Antigua Forum as a benefit because by accelerating down, me down that path that I had been envisioning, I more quickly learned that I needed to pivot away from that path and explore alternatives that might have taken me many more years to pursue. So what we ended up doing was realizing that when it comes to these ideas, these free market ideas, we can't rely on teachers who are not familiar with the ideas to be the ones teaching them. Uh, especially if they completely disagree with these ideas. If you have a socialist in the classroom using free market curriculum, right? That they're not going to do justice to the ideas to the kids, and the kids aren't going to really retain the ideas in a 30, 40 minute class. Um, we decided that we needed to go into the home, that we need to e needed to educate siblings together, parents and children together, so that they could have conversations in those informal moments between the, the formal curriculum activities, so that when they're at the grocery store, they could say, now we understand why there's 13 kinds of potato chips, right? It's, you know, spontaneous order, division of labor. Uh, we felt like by, by approaching the families with this kind of family package of materials that it would provide for deeper learning experiences. And that's been validated. Uh, we now have uh, almost 3,000 families currently using the curriculum and growing every day. Um, and we're very excited about it because we think that this is going to have a much richer educational experience for those children than if we had just kind of peppered them in school with this content but not really achieved the, the deep learning that they need to. So Connor, thank you very, very much for being with us here today on our 10th anniversary. It's a special, very special for us as you can imagine. You've been in the Antiwa Forum family for some years now, so thank you and we hope to have you again in the future. Well, thanks for having me. It's always an exciting opportunity to be here and I already look forward to the next time. I think our movement needs to think more about entire families. It's the discussions around the dinner table. It's the debates while mom and dad are watching the news at night. It's the conversations in the car with the kids when they hear something on the radio. Those are the moments when these perceptions and values are distilled and reinforced, not only in the children, but in the entire family.